everybody we're doing a tutorial today where we're taking a look at this 1947 royal arrow this one says made in canada this is um shortly after they restarted the production of these uh royal portables um they halted production during the war and so this is just within the first year or two after that that they started um, doing civilian production. So this is just post-war. Um, fun to think about um, the people that used this machine. So we're gonna take a look at it. It's a really nice portable typewriter. Uh, again, great to take to the coffee shop with you because some portables really are kind of clunky to, to move around, but this is this is really a nice size for a portable. So if you want to see how this works, um, which I recommend because this one was a little, I'll talk about it a little bit more, but it was a little bit different typing on it. So I recommend going to the product listing link in the description and uh, check out the photos and then the typing demo that I did for it. Okay. So let's start with the back. So this has a magic margin on the left side um, and it doesn't have it on the right side, but if you flip that open, you can also set your margins right here. Um, so this is your right margin and then your left margin is right there. And if you just want to hold it in while holding your carriage, then you can adjust it out way back there. And so now your margin is way back here. And then if you want to go in, just find the place you want to set it and then pull it forward. So going this way, you just pull it forward and you'll hear it click. If you want to go out, you have to pull it forward while releasing your carriage, set it and then release. So to release your carriage, if you're not familiar, there's a lever right here behind the handle and right here. And then you just, that releases your carriage. Now, just keep in mind for those of you who are new to Jot and Tittle, my name is Laura, my husband is Rob. Rob does all the repair work. He does all the typewriter hunting and I do the photos and the videos and I build the website and when I have time, I do social media. And if I really have time, I might send out an email. It's probably been four months since I've done an email, if not longer. Um, so I do the rest of it. And um, so the purpose of this video is just, if you've got one and you don't know how to use it, this video will hopefully show you how to use it. So again, that's how you move your carriage. Remember your carriage is only gonna move as far as you have the margin set. So it's gonna stop right there and it's gonna go all the way here. If I wanna bring my margin in, again, just pull that. And now my carriage will only go between here. Now that bell will ding when you get to your margin, okay? And that tells you, hey, it's time for you to hit your return handle and advance to the next line. Um, so some typewriters, or all of them, I should say, when you get to your margin, and let's say that bell goes off and you're in the middle of a word or a thought and you don't wanna hit the return handle, well then there's a margin release lever that releases it and then you can keep going um, and that's what a margin release is for now when you hit your return handle it's going to advance either one or two lines and i believe this is the line selector here yep so this is forward is two back is one and then let's see what it goes in nope it doesn't so it has one or two on this one uh, this lever here is your paper release so I'm gonna load a piece of paper and it goes right here behind the roller and that's also the copper plate and you make sure it goes underneath the bar now let's say if you noticed this is pretty even but there's just a slight edge here that's a little bit further out than um, this side of the paper so I'm gonna bring that forward, try to line it up perfectly, and then re-engage it. And oops, now I'm a little uneven on this side. And it may not be per, oh, there we go. So that's how you line up your paper. And I always like to bring it up to halfway to make sure it's nice and even. 
Also, when you're done typing and you wanna take out your paper, pull that paper release forward and then you just pull it out. That's what that's for. Okay, let's open up the top. And so to do that, I'm gonna move the carriage to the left, pop open the top inside. You're gonna see the spools. This typewriter did not come with the original spool, so we put in a universal ribbon. And, um, and that's a two inch spool with a half inch ribbon. If you um, need ribbons for your typewriters, you just go to our website at jotandtittletypewriters.com and we have a couple of options for your ribbons. Now, if you have the original spools and you want fresh ribbon on it, go to our custom ribbon option and in there you'll see how you can send us your spools and we'll wind fresh ribbon on it and we'll mail it back to you. Also, if you click the description, uh, if you look in the description below and you'll find a link for the product listing, you'll find photos on that product listing. And one of them is of this whole area in here. Um, and that way you can see how the ribbon is, is threaded through the guide wires, okay? It's actually really easy. You just pull that spool out and there's little gaps in the guide wires that you can thread the ribbon through to take them out and to put them in. And then you just pop them back down. There's little pins that stick up that you have to make sure fall into those holes. So you may have to jimmy it around. There we go, until it pops down there. Okay, so now when you get to the end, it, when you type, you can see that that turned. Okay, so that's turning when it gets to the end of the spool. It's not the end of the ink in your ribbon. So to reverse, manually reverse the direction of your spool, you use this switch right here. Now you'll see it's turning that way. Okay, so that is how that works. And you should be able to go back and forth many times before you need to replace your ribbon. You'll see the sign that says touch control. That's what this is. So sometimes you have a lighter touch and some people have a heavier touch. And so that's how you can adjust the pressure that you use in typing versus how this typewriter works. And you just kind of go back and forth till you find just the right pressure to get just the right imprint that you're looking for on this typewriter. Now, this particular one, I don't know if it's all arrows. Uh, it's been a while since I've used one. But this particular one, I found that it's not um, necessarily suitable for those of you with smaller hands, which I have very small hands. I had to press down quite far to use this typewriter, so I can't do the home row typing. I have to do the dinky typing like this and um, in order to use the typewriter because I don't have long enough fingers. So just keep that in mind. Even though it's a portable typewriter, it doesn't mean it's for small hands. Right here is your color selector. So you'll see a white, a blue, and a red. That blue is actually the black, obviously. Um, white means stencil. You're not gonna ever use that. And if your selector happens to be on white, it's not gonna type properly. Um, so if you ever have issues while typing, everything starts working weird or it's just not it's just not handling right. There are two things to look for. One, make sure your selector's not on stencil and that it's on black or red. And two, try reversing your ribbon and that should solve 99% of the problems. Okay, so down here you'll see backspace. Remember, backspace does not erase, it just backspace so you can type over a mistake or fill in a spot or something like that. Um, this typewriter does not have a tabulator on it. It's just the way it was made. You have your lock, and um, this is your shift lock right here. And then to, to release, you just press it, and that releases it. I already showed you the margin release. This comes with gla the round glass keys, which are just so fun to have, so iconic, classic, and beautiful. Um, and then, oh, I always forget the serial number. I always look and I can never remember. Sometimes you need a flashlight. So let me just look really quick to see if I see it. 
All right, hold on, I'll get right back with you. Okay, so the serial number is here on the left side, right here in the back, okay? So you write that down, you go to typewriterdatabase.com and then you can look up the year that, that it was manufactured and sometimes you can find more information on it as well. Also, they have a gallery, so if you wanna register with them and then you can upload a picture of your typewriter and compare it um, with other people who have the same make and model. All right, I hope this was helpful for you. Um, please support us by liking, subscribing, visiting our website at jotintotypewriters.com and shopping there or our Etsy shop. That's what keeps us, um, makes us able to continue to do these videos for free for you. You all have a blessed day and happy typing.